Welcome back to another episode of Silent Pals Go to the Movies. Today I'll be reviewing the movie Drive Away Dolls. So just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead so you've been warned. Jamie regrets her breakup with her girlfriend, while Marion needs to relax. In search of a fresh start, they embark on a unexpected road trip to Tallahassee. Things quickly go awry when they cross paths with a group of inept criminals. So let's begin with my first pro. This is a Coen brother movie. Well, it's just one brother, but still, I think it counts. The brother who was involved was Ethan. He directed it and helped write the film. I mean, if you are not familiar with their films, we have reviewed quite a few. I recall reviewing The Big Lebowski and Old Brother Were Out Thou. Good films worth taking a look at, in my opinion. So yeah, a pro for at least being one of the brothers involved in the film. And yeah, you do get a Coen S feeling in this film. Next pro, the cast. We have big names in this film. We have Matt Damon, Pedro Pascal, Bill Camp, Coleman Domingo. Yeah, some of them are not in the film that long. Matt Damon and Pedro Pascal, for example. I guess it was just to sell the film. That's why they're in the film and in the trailer. But we also have Miley Cyrus in the film playing the part of Tiffany Plastercaster, sort of a homage to the real Cynthia Plastercaster. But that's another story for another day. Again, Miley isn't in the film that long, but it plays into the plot in one of the flashbacks. So the fact that most of the big names are not in the film for too long, it's good because I guess it gives a chance to the other talent to shine. Bit of a mixed reaction on this one, but still, I count it as a pro. Next pro, I really did enjoy the soundtrack they laid out in the film. It was nice to listen to as a film played out. I mean, even if the film lays out the date that the film took place in, which is 1999, I still feel that it gives this more of a 70s vibe, and not due to the trippy psychedelic transitions in the film, but everything else, clothing that the cast use, to the aesthetic that the film uses, heck, even the scene when they pick up the car at Curly's, it all says pre-1999 to me. And now onto my cons. First off, this was half a Coen brother movie, so it does show it, you feel something missing in it, but can't quite put your finger on it. I mean, I do feel a lingering sense of the big Lebowski plot in here somewhere, but not the full dose. Also, it feels like this was a small draft. It just needed a little bit more polishing added to it. Maybe that's when the other brother would come in. Next con, sort of linked to this previous con, there were some parts that I thought surely they're going to be explained further down the line in the film. Some examples, the book that Marion and the Chief are both reading, The Europeans by Henry James. At one point I said they will come back to this, maybe when the Chief meets Marion, but at that meeting the Chief gets killed and we never find out why they showed both reading the same book. And even Marion having a conversation with Jamie in the car about the author. They really never touched upon it after that. Next example, the character Suki was not necessary in the film. I mean, she did not add anything to the film. Everything she did, other characters could have done easily. The information of who the girls were, Curly could have shown the chief video footage of them. Suki shooting the senator, Matt Damon, a normal cop or a club bouncer, or just anybody on the street could have stopped them. Even the psychedelic transitions were pointless. It didn't add anything, because later, Later, they just talk about the plaster caster played by Miley for three minutes. The transitions together took longer and didn't explain anything. Next con, the film had inconsistencies. One that was hard to ignore was Jamie's champagne glass and how the levels kept going up and down in the restaurant scene without her even sipping on the glass. I was like, okay, this must have been done on purpose because if I recall correctly, they do focus on the glass as the champagne is being poured, but then the levels keep going up and down. This and the fact that the plot was already weak did not help the film. And just so I don't have to add another con to this review. We never got to see Marion's old girlfriend, even though she spoke about her, nor did they explain why we kept seeing her revisit her peeking at her naked neighbor when she was small. I really thought this was going to explain why she was uptight while Jamie was a free spirit, but still, in the film, they're besties. So what gives? Give me something so I can care about these girls as they're going in their journey. And explain to me, since I'm already watching the film, for a reason. And no, it's not to see lesbians with a briefcase full of dildos. Oh, and Pedro's Pascal decapitated head as the girls are on a road trip, because I already saw that in the trailer already. So my grade for this film is going to be a 6 out of 10. The film seemed it lacked explanation for certain points and backstory for some characters. I really wanted them to tie in the book, maybe have them talk about it and go into deep conversation. Then Jamie comes in and says, hello, sorry to break up your book club conversation, but this guy has us tied up. You know, make it a funny scene, at least. But nope, the chief just gets shot and that was it for his character. Some characters were not really needed, like Suki. I mean, the actress is funny and talented but here they just didn't give me enough backstory for the actress to play her. The film is fine, even if it's not both Coen brothers in the film, it will hurt it by some people like me saying the other brother was needed making the film. I gotta say, not the best Coen film, but hey, I might not have understood the film, so if you did, please let me know below in the comments. So that does it for this review of Drive Away Dolls. Please join us next time where we're going to review Imaginary. Every culture has entities that tether to the young. We call them imaginary friends. Please like, comment, and
join and subscribe, you can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.